And so with that in mind, we need these pro features. My friends at Longer wanted me to check out their LK4 Pro 3D printer. And while the printer itself did impress me overall, it made me think a lot about pro features in 3D printers. They cost extra, and are they worth the cost? Well, I think I've got the answer, and I hope you'll stick around to find that out. Hey everybody, it's Joe, and this is not the first printer from Longer that I've reviewed. I previously looked at their Cube 2 3D printer, which is a fully assembled 3D printer, ostensibly for kids, comes out of the box ready to go, and it's easy to use. Now, at the time, I used this to do a project for my son, and it was good. It did the job very well. However, after that review, I discovered something about this printer. I decided to start testing all the printers that I had available to me for accuracy, and my test for accuracy were by 3D printing Lego bricks. I found the models. These aren't models that I created. These are models that I found on the Print-A-Brick archive. Now, the Print-A-Brick archive is no longer available, but this is the internet, right? Anyways, by printing a Lego, I thought, if it could print accurately, that I could test it simply by clicking it into a store-bought Lego and taking a store-bought Lego and clicking it into it. Well, this printer, among all the ones that I tested, had a kind of unique problem. The circles on the bottom of the Legos were very clearly, visibly, non-circular. They were kind of tilted and ovalid. Uniformly, it's not like it was doing it different on each layer. It was uniformly off, but it was off every time. It's the sort of error that happens when you have a loose belt or perhaps the gear that drives the belt is loose and it just jigs a little bit. Every time the motor switches direction, there's a moment where the belt doesn't switch direction. Now, that doesn't lessen my opinion of this printer much. It's still a good printer. It works and it's functional. It's simply not capable of doing the sort of accuracy that you would want to do if you were printing something, well, measurably accurate like a Lego. Now, move over to the LK4 Pro. I unboxed this in a previous video, and you got to see as I was unboxing it, while I tried not to show you guys, I was a little bit disappointed at how much setup and work this printer required. It was, it was just a little bit more than I expected. It wasn't bad, but I expected it to be like a Creality CR10 or an Ender 3, where you simply stand the, the Z-axis up, screw it in, and you're good to go. But no, this machine, you needed to basically build the Z gantry, the Y gantry, put the motors in place, hook everything up. It's interesting to note that everything from below the build plate was pretty much already done for you, which means that they put the electronics together, they put the power supply in there, that was all one unit, but then I had to build the build plate itself and, and all these things. Now, while I don't mind the work, it does mean that if this printer is inaccurate, there's a chance that it was my fault. So I had to be very careful as I was putting this machine together. And let's talk about the instructions that came in the box. These instructions are how do I put it? Really bad. It's not that they're inaccurate, but they don't show very well what you're trying to do. Things that should be zoomed in on and seen from a better angle aren't. And a lot of the English that's in here was clearly written by somebody who doesn't speak English around the home, which I'm not knocking. We live in an international world and we should be ready to accept this, but on a professional product, eh, you kind of want to expect a little bit more. Now, these instructions, as difficult as they were to follow, 
weren't a roadblock for me because I've built other 3D printers and so I knew what I was doing. And I was very happy to find that these instructions have been updated. There's a PDF that you can find that has much better pictures, that's easier to follow, that's a lot clearer. And so, yes, this is something that they could really easily fix just with a change in documentation. Now that PDF that I found though also had problems because its description of how to set up the slicer was inaccurate. It was telling you how to set up the slicer for a much larger 3D printer than this one. And again, not a roadblock for me because I knew what I was doing. But if this was your first 3D printer, and I always evaluate my 3D printers based on ease of use, and that includes ease of use of setting it up and ease of use of following the instructions for a first time user. While I might not be a first time user, I can think like one and think, how would a first time user experience this? And the first time user experience for this printer wasn't great. However, it doesn't have to remain that way. They don't have to change a thing on this 3D printer to change that first time experience to make those instructions easier to follow. Yes, you still have to assemble it and you still have to be careful in your assembly of it or it won't be accurate, but it's still, that is something that they could fix. And by the time that you're watching this video, they may have already fixed it, which is super exciting that they don't have to change this printer. Now, let's talk about the printer itself. One of the things that Longer prides themselves on in this machine is that they have put quiet stepper drivers in it, which means that when this printer is moving around, you will not be able to hear those motors go. And while that is true, they did make another, I feel rather interesting choice in light of this. They put a case fan on here that sounds like a gas-powered jet turbine. Yeah, Maybe I could replace that fan and, and make this whole unit a lot quieter, which if I did, this unit would actually be quiet enough to run like by your bedside while you sleep. Not that I would recommend that, seeing as how we still have to consider Vox, but it would be that level of quiet, and that's exciting. Oh, and I did have a problem with the build plate when I first started printing with it. Like I said, I had to build the whole build plate assembly myself, but I thought I had done it very carefully. Then I put on the build plate, and even after carefully leveling it, it still was showing signs of not being level, of almost being irregular throughout the whole thing, and I decided maybe the problem was that the build tack like surface that they had put on top of this printer, maybe it was bubbled or warped in some way. And so, well, fortunately, it's a removable plate of glass. So all I had to do was remove that plate, flip it over, coat it with hairspray, and that immediately leveled out the surface because when you put hairspray on, you put it on very thick so that it creates a liquid surface and that liquid surface creates a flat surface for you. Now again, remember if you use hairspray, to only use it in a well-ventilated room. Safety first. Now I've been knocking on this printer a lot, the instructions, the loud fan, but there is a lot to praise about this printer. And the biggest thing I think to praise about it is their touchscreen interface. All of Longer's printers have a great touchscreen interface that I'm super excited to see and I hope to see on more 3D printers, but their Pro line has a step above as far as their user interface go. They make it just ever so slightly better and I honestly really, really like this touchscreen interface. This to me is a huge bump in ease of use. And while this printer may have lost some points in ease of use for being difficult to set up, it really gains them back and maybe even more just for having this spot on user interface. But that's not this printer's only pro feature. It has filament runout detection, which I said was in a Ender 5. It's not, but it is definitely in this machine. And I tested it mid print. I snipped off the filament, let it run through, and sure enough, it stopped the print. Now, I did run into a problem when I was testing the filament out detection. Well, actually, I wasn't testing it, but I'm glad that this happened. I pulled out the filament, 
and forgot to load a new filament in before I started to print. And when I started to print, to its credit, this machine did say, hey, I'm detecting that there's no filament in there. Do you want to load some filament? Now, that was good, except for the fact that I realized that I could not get it to resume the print and go on until it detected that there was a filament in there, which means that if this sensor is ever broken or if the cord going to it is ever broken or if there's any reason why despite having filament in there it thinks that there's no filament in there it will refuse to print anymore and you would have to completely override this switch in order to be able to continue to print and that's not good in my opinion what it should do is it should simply say, hey, I'm not detecting any filament. Are you sure you want to go through with this print? And if you say yes, then it should not regard the filament detection and just go on with the print without it. It's admittedly a little bit dirty to do that, but at least it puts the control in the hands of the users instead of trusting the machine over the users. Because machines do have faults sometimes. They make mistakes and you should always trust the user over them. Maybe I'm a little bit sore about this because I'm going through some problems with my Da Vinci Color and they're very similarly related to this, but I don't like that feature of this and so I hope that they change it and I don't see any reason why Longer wouldn't change it. It's not like they've got chipped filament or any reason to convince us that we shouldn't be able to use this printer which we should feel like we're owning. One of my first prints on this printer was to 3D print some Legos again. And this one had none of the problems that the Cube 2 did. It did an admirable job of printing the Legos accurately. But was it dimensionally accurate? Well, almost. While it did do a good job of printing them, while I didn't even have to adjust the flow rate, it had gotten that done properly, it uh, unfortunately printed them a little bit too small, which is an indication that the X and Y stepper motors are perfectly calibrated. Now, this is easy to fix. You can either recalibrate the X and Y stepper motors, which you can do with G-code, and there are many people out there who show how to do it, or you can simply scale up the model a little bit. If you scale up that model just a little bit, it will bring it into the correct dimensions. However, instead of doing that, I pulled out my old Gib Bricks, this project that I'm making to create Legos that don't require the dimensional accuracy be perfectly dialed in on your 3D printer. They have little flex points in them so that you can be slightly off and your parts will still flex. And as soon as I printed these Gib Bricks, I tested them out on real Legos and tested real Legos out on them. And sure enough, these Gib bricks did a good enough job of correcting for the dimensional inaccuracies that, that these worked. This means that this printer, while it is not dimensionally accurate out of the box, is not far off from it. And it's close enough that it can be corrected for with just a little bit of effort. So that's, that's really, really good. All of the pro features in this machine basically have one purpose, to make this machine as easy to use as possible. But does it make your prints better? Like I said, you could look at this and see an Ender 3 and, and maybe be forgiven for thinking it's an Ender 3 until you looked closer because it's got the same build volume, it's got a similar feed system, it runs the, feed, the filament, close to the z-axis screw although not as close as creality machines do but yeah it's got a lot in common with an ender 3 and the same could be said for the print quality that comes out of this machine the first prints that i ran on this machine was an entire set of the farm chibi mall set for my nieces and nephews for christmas and this machine spent three days printing that entire set a side note I did not realize that the entire set of Chibimol from the farm took three days to print. So that was eye-opening for me. But that aside, yeah, it took me three days to print that, and this machine chugged along and made beautiful prints the whole time. The only time I had any problem was when I loaded in some not good filament. But that was the filament's fault. The moment I swapped it out for good filament, the prints went back to being beautiful. 
So this is the question. These pro features don't improve the print quality at all because the print quality is already pretty much at the top level. So what are they good for? Well, the answer is that they smooth out the journey for the person using the printer. You, as the user of the printer, gets the benefit of the pros. There are things that are above and beyond the core functionality of a 3D printer. There are things that, while not technically necessary to make it run, are nice to have. And are those things worth paying a little bit of extra money for? Well, here's my thought on that subject. I am always in it to have 3D printing grow as a hobby. I want more people to get into 3D printing. And at this point, I feel like just about everybody who's so engineering minded that they only care about the output is already into 3D printing. In order to reach out to the next group of people, we need 3D printers that are more like an appliance, more like a microwave that you just hit go on and they print. And so with that in mind, we need these pro features in more 3D printers. In the general case, I am going to recommend to people that if you can afford the pro features to pay for them and have them because it will make the user experience better for you. And I don't know if you are one of those people who like putting together a machine from spare parts yourself or if you're somebody who is going to get frustrated with a machine that makes you dial in things with a bare marlin interface and has a confusing way of talking to you. Since I don't know you, in the general case, my suggestion is going to be yes, go for those pro features. Now there's a chance that that doesn't apply to you and that is your choice, but if somebody asks me, should I go for the normal or the pro 3D printer, Without knowing anything about them, my answer is and has to be yes. Go for those pro features because I want more people to be into 3D printing. And if that means that having a smoother experience for people who haven't gotten into 3D printing yet is the way to do it, I feel that that's right. But what do you think? Do you feel that we're just wasting our time and money on pro features or do they actually have value? So what's the final verdict on this printer? What's the final score that I'm gonna give it? I think to build the score for this printer, I'm gonna start with an Ender 3 because compared to the Ender 3, its capability, the things that it can do, is practically identical. Almost the exact same build volume. And so one nozzle, one filament, and it prints just as well. Capability between this and the Ender 3 is exactly the same. And it does lose points in the price category because it is slightly more expensive. However, if you can catch these on sale, it's well worth it. It does gain back some points in ease of use, however, because compared to the Ender 3, those pro features are really, really a big boost to its ease of use. But then it loses again in the ease of use because it does require you to put it together a lot more than an Ender 3 and the instructions for doing so aren't great. They can fix the instructions and gain those points back. And so overall, I think that this is slightly better than an Ender 3 at slightly more cost, which is fair. In balance, I think it's, it's comparable. And for me, it definitely gets a recommendation. Before we go, check out this cool project on the What You Making channel on my Discord. Why don't you stop by and check out what other cool projects are there. And hey, if you share something you've done, maybe you'll see it in a future video too. Thank you very much for watching. Hey, if I mentioned anything in this video, you'll find a link to it in the cards and you should check that out. Did you know that I'm social? I've got links to all the socials and you should stop by and say hi. I really kind of enjoy it when that happens. Big thanks go out to my direct backers. And if you want to know more about how you can become that, there'll be a link right here that you can check out. And as always, I want to remind you safety first because I care about you and I'll see you next time. Oh, that's interesting. Classic one there.